Islam remains an issue. The Tunisian opposition is still very weak. Many observers believe leadership reform is also essential within the opposition parties. The average age of the opposition leaders close to 70 years, and Ben Ali himself, 74. Uh, Nuruddin Maladi, let's bring you in as a Tunisian. What do you think the most important thing uh, for stability in your country is now? I think um, um, a very important move by the next um, um, government is to um, be inclusive of all these varieties that you've been talking about in the Tunisian scene. And it's very important for us as a country to avoid become another Afghanistan, become another Iraq, is really to um, um, uh, stop any form of radicalization of these young people in the future by including, including all of this variety in terms of political tendencies, ideologies and so forth within the political rule. So here I'm specifically talking about political Islam like an uh, the, 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 uh, the, the so-called, for example, radical uh, communist party by Hamel Hamami, the nationalists, all these varieties, they constitute the fabric of the Tunisian society in, in addition to what is actually existing now. Even the previous ruling regime and its uh, leaders, they shouldn't be excluded also from, from, from participating in the ruling the country. And I think a general election, a real democratic general election will bring in a, 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 the true mosaic of uh, what should be a government running the country in the future. This is very challenging, this is not easy, but all of these people should sit down in, uh, uh, together on the table and truly debate and truly think about the, uh, think about the solution. They shouldn't, I mean, as I said in the, in the beginning, every Tunisian has the right by constitution to become a president. Every Tunisian by constitution has the right to um, um, uh, become a member of parliament and so forth. The last 50 years of the rule of um, uh, Bourguiba and next after him of uh, Ben Ali tells a completely different picture. Only the people whom these regimes like and they think they can be associated with them are allowed to be part of the government itself. Now, you've been talking about um, uh, the, the, the opposition is represented in, a, in about 25% in the Tunisian, previous Tunisian parliament. That's absolutely true. But it's but not a real opposition, opposition is it? It's not a it's real opposition at all. It's, 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 it's allowed think by the they government. serve his agenda and nothing else. OK, thanks very much indeed. Uh, John Entellis, are they going to be worried in the White House about what's happening in Tunisia and, by extension, what could happen across the, the, the broader Middle East and North Africa? Well, what's interesting is both Hillary Clinton's comments uh, in Doha that you cited and President Obama's comments after uh, Ben Ali left Tunisia, I think are indicative of a change, at least in tone and hopefully in policy, regarding the utility of aligning American policy with dictators whose principal uh, advantage from the American perspective is that they're stable, that they are willing to work with the U.S. in the war against terrorism, quote unquote, uh, that they essentially take uh, more moderate positions on issues in international affairs, uh, rather than how they are viewed by their own people, the way in which they govern, uh, and particularly th uh, the oppressive and corrupt manner in which these governments have uh, maintained themselves these many years. So I'd like to think that the, the rhetoric reflects a new reality on the part of American foreign policy, and that uh, the experiences of Iran in 1979 and Algeria in 1992, in which the U.S. was on the wrong side of both of those uh, uprisings and revolutions, that, that those lessons will be uh, absorbed and that the U.S. now will be cautious and supportive of the popular character of what's happened in Tunisia. But, but how will well, the United Obama's States, very clear. in its he own interests, how will the United States, in its own interests, uh, ensure uh, that the vacuum isn't filled by groups it would consider to be extremists? Well, it, it has to allow the popular will to form its own uh, identity and its own agenda. Uh, if it's done in a democratic and uh, 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 pluralistic fashion, assuming that the Tunisian experience moves on to a stage of genuine collaboration among various groups and organizations that uh, we've been citing, though I have some difficulty in, in, in linking 
uh, the outlawed organizations, and you cited the age of the leaders uh, such as Ham Hamami, who was a Marxist, or Rashid Ghanoushi, the head of Al Nahda, or even someone like uh, 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 Najib Shabbi. I mean, these are old time individuals uh, who have long contested the regime, but who's, who are in some ways disconnected with the, the populist uh, uprising that is represented by the youth. And I'm not sure that the youth is, is, is available or uh, identifies with these old line opposition figures. And can, so I, can I ask, what's, 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 what's sorry to stop you there, John, but can I just ask Abdullah sure. Al-Ashaw, because we're talking about um, old line government people and Mubarak is well into his 80s. Um, as he seems to be preparing for his son's succession, uh, will he be a worried man? I think the regime in Egypt is very much worried because uh, all the explosive uh, elements are available in Egypt and more than Tunisia because in Tunisia we are too much similar in many things but in addition to that the regime had failed to cement the national unity between Muslims and Christians and secondly the Nile water is threatened seriously and thirdly um, what happened in Sudan and what is expected to be happening in Egypt and other states concerning the partition or Lebanization of Egypt. I think this are, these are the dangers with the regime is unable to face. Thank you. I'm going to have to stop you there because I want to, before the program ends, to just bring in some other words from Hillary Clinton, uh, which she said uh, in Doha the other day, referring to Arab regimes. Uh, she put out this message. Those who cling to the status quo may be able to hold back the full impact of their country's problems for a little while, but not forever. Thank you very much to our guests in London, Nuruddin Maladi, in Cairo, Abdullah al ashal and in New York, John Entellis. Thank you too for watching this edition of Inside Stories. Drop us a line if you can, Inside Story at Al Jazeera.net. Inside Story at Al Jazeera.net. Until next time.